Hello, I am now back in my home country. Took a 17 hour flight with a two hour layover in between to get back here. I chose a room in my parents' house that looks the most like my previous filming location. As you can see, there is a bookcase in the background, which I'm sure is important to all of you. Two films I want to talk about today are Forrest Gump and The Godfather Part 2, which are the two films I watched on the flight. Watched Forrest Gump on the first flight, which was 10 hours, and I watched Godfather Part 2 on the second flight, which was 7 hours. Uh, and I just want to talk about them very briefly. They're both Best Picture winners. Godfather Part 2 won in, I want to say, 1975, I think, uh, which was just two years after The Godfather. And Forrest Gump won in 1995, so 20 years apart. Uh, they were also both on the AFI Top 100, uh, so I got to com progress towards two of my bucket list goals by watching these films, which is always nice. Um, I'll talk about Forrest Gump first, because that's the film I watched first. Uh, I did watch these both on planes, and your emotional reaction to films is kind of changed when you're on a plane. I have reacted more positively to films on planes, but when I watched them afterwards, I was like, oh, no, that wasn't as good as I remembered. Um, I've also just reacted differently, I laugh at different jokes, I respond to different cues. Forrest Gump, I took a long sleep in the middle of, I watched an hour and a half of it, uh, and then I went to sleep for eight hours. I don't normally get to sleep on planes, so that was terrific. And then I watched another hour, and then we landed. It was a great, great flight. Um, Forrest Gump is a very strange film. I wasn't entirely sure what it was going for what it was trying to do. I wasn't sure if it was serious or if it was being kind of very ironic. I didn't know um, how much the sort of morals of the story that you took out were would hold up if, it, if the film believed in them. It was very hard to actually get under the surface of what it was aiming for. It's not a dislikable film. Uh, Tom Hanks is always very watchable. Um, he's doing a very thick uh, sort of accent and a very pronounced vocal affect in this film, which I think some people might find grating. I find it a bit hard to get used to, but then once I got into the flow of it, I didn't mind it so much. Um, he's always very watchable. He, you know, he commands any scene he's in. Um, the The script is very strange. <laughs> Um, the, the, the basic premise of Forrest Gump, I mean, even trying to sum up the premise is very hard. It's, it's kind of one man's life, but he has a very unusual life. Um, I think it's outright stated, or it's at least very heavily implied that he is neuroatypical. Uh, and he just kind of lives his life in various historic time periods and through extremely convoluted <laughs> measures, he ends up influencing a lot of American history um, and achieving a, a great amount of success despite perhaps not being the kind of person you would expect to be extremely successful. Um, for one thing, at the start of the film, uh, he is about to be kicked out of school because he has not got the requisite IQ. Um, uh, but his mother, uh, played by Sally Fields, kind of corrects that. Um, she doesn't correct his IQ, she, well, I won't spoil it, <laughs> she gets him back into school, let's say. And yes, it goes through his life, and it's very hard to describe. Um, I mean, sure, I'm sure most people have seen Forrest Gump, it's very, it's entered into pop culture extremely thickly, I don't know. It's, it's a part of pop culture, and I, I think I'm one of the few people left who haven't seen it. Um, so I'm sure you're watching this wondering why I'm bothering to describe it, but I, I found it very hard to pin down. I couldn't tell if it was being ironic. Its main theme seemed to be about randomness and kind of happenstance and kismet, which are interesting themes, and I, I think it tackles them in an interesting way, but then it could also be seen to be about perseverance or indeed just about kind of the bliss of ignorance um it's very hard to pin down what they're trying to say it's hard uh I, at moments it seems almost satirical but then uh, but then i think especially the way hanks is playing gump it's not just that he's playing it very straight laced he seems to be trying to 
present the story. At, he's, his, his performance to me seemed odds with the direction that he was trying to push the story as very one very sincere and the direction and the writing were almost kind of like, huh, wink, wink. I don't know why I didn't wink when I said wink, wink. Wink, wink. There we go. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's an odd duck. Uh, it's not a bad film. It's very enjoyable. Also, you can totally watch it and take a, an eight-hour sleep in the middle, as I found out, and doesn't really disrupt the flow of it because it's very segmented. It's just time period, time period, time period. Um, it's all very clearly delineated, and all the characters are very easily, a very easy to tell apart. So good for them. Also, should be said, special effects are wonderful. Um, and I don't mean in that kind of Avengers, like, oh my god, the special effects kind of. I mean like. The special effects are delightful. They they very seamlessly blend Tom Hanks, modern day Tom Hanks, into old historical footage, and most of the time it looks great. Like most of the time, you 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 know you'd be hard pressed to tell. The only, it's 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 kind of uncanny valley because you know it's not real, but it looks very real. The only one to me that kind of failed on that was actually one of the ironically one of the more recent clips that they modified, which was with John Lennon which looked very odd. Oh well. Um, but yes, um, good film. Um, not entirely sure what to make of it, but why, why do you have to be able to make something of everything you watch? Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, and a weird film is just a weird film. Then on my next flight, I watched The Godfather Part 2. I took a couple of sleeps in between this one as well. Not so much because I was tired, because I'd slept a lot on the other film, um, the other train plane, but because the film was kind of exhausting to watch. It is very long and it is very slow moving, and the scenes are well acted, and the story is quite compelling, but it does take its sweet time. Also, not a great film to watch on a plane because it's very dark. Even I think the cinematographer did admit that he thought that some of the scenes he shot were too dark. Um, and obviously you don't have great control over the lighting on an aeroplane. I managed to convince someone near me to shut their window so I could watch it, but even then, sometimes, and like, a lot of the characters look quite similar to one another, and they have quite similar names, um, so I, I did get a bit lost figuring out who was who. Um, that being said, it's a very compelling film. Al Pacino is great as Michael Corleone. Um, the person I really liked, actually, was um, John Cazale as Fredo. John Cazale, very interesting fact here, uh, every single film he was in was nominated for Best Picture, which uh, no other actor has managed unless they were in only one film. So he's the only actor in multiple films who uh, every film he was in was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, and he was very good. He, uh, Fredo is, I think, probably my favourite character in Godfather Part 2. He's very relatable and very interesting. Uh, the Godfather Part 2 is segmented, so there are... Yet again, everyone's watched The Godfather Part 2 and it's part of pop culture. In fact, something else, because I watched a couple of uh, episodes of TV shows as well while I was on the plane. Uh, one of the, the TV episodes I watched was referencing The Godfather Part 2 while I was watching it in between parts of The Godfather Part 2. So, Godfather Part 2 is very much in pop culture, but in case you haven't watched it, uh, it's two storylines, one of which is about the Godfather from the first film, Vito Corleone, about him coming to America and establishing himself as one of the sort of primary mafia guys in America, and the other part is about Vito Corleone's son, Michael Corleone, and his various troubles trying to consolidate power and sort of get everyone to stop fighting. There's a lot of assassination attempts. There's a lot of people who don't like each other for various reasons. And yeah, I did not entirely see why the two stories were linked other than they were father and son. And I guess they were about consolidating power, but Michael's story was a lot more solidly about consolidating power. Whereas Vito's story skipped over a lot of the ways that he consolidated power um, the Vito story to me, uh, it either should have been its own film or it sh they should have covered sort of other er other parts of his life with greater detail because there's a lot missing. He kind of comes to America 
And the, the scene before he comes to America is great. The scene explaining why he had to flee to America is fantastic. And then he comes to America, and then he's just kind of in America, and then he does a couple of things, and then suddenly he is this incredibly respected, incredibly powerful mafia figure. And to me, it seemed like he didn't really do enough to gain that power, given how, how much influence he is shown to have I in both this film and in the last Godfather film. It's a bit strange. They, I think they needed to give more emphasis on what exactly it was he did. But yeah, um, very well made, very well directed, um, wonderfully compelling films um, about family and violence, etc. So yeah, um, those are the two films I watched, Godfather Part 2 and Forrest Gump. I have to admit, Godfather Part 2 being three hours or so, even on a seven hour flight, I was kind of wanting it to end sooner. Not gonna lie. It's probably blasphemy to say that. Oh well, that's how I felt. But yes, uh, I am home safely and I am closer to completing my bucket list goals of watching every Best Picture winner and every film on the AFI Top 100. So, that's great. See you later.